They aren't launching any attacks, but they do open fire when we approach. It's textbook, Mark. They're trying to lure us in. Welcome to New Generation Pictures here in beautiful downtown Beverly Hills. My name is Talison Jaffe. I'm the voice director for Helsing, Helsing Ultimate, and uh, this being Helsing Ultimate Volume 4, the volume I, we never thought we'd see, and sitting to my left. Ralph Lister playing um, Walter, Angel of Death, Dolnays. Loving it. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome to... Uh, well, I'm, I'm trying not to say too many nonsense things in this interview, but it, it'll, it'll come out of me. Every now and then, sorry. It's, it's a hopeless endeavor. So, um, shall we cut to a clever question now? Yeah, we'll cut to a clever question. <laughs> Actually, I've been meaning to ask you. Yes? Why did you turn Seras into a vampire? It just seems so out of character. You understand my concerns. <laughs> Here we go. Let's be serious, kids. Uh, how did you start acting? A uh, little boy, age nine, school play. I was a Fagin-type character from a Dickensian novel. I put a stone in my left shoe, so it made me hobble. And my mother was so proud that during the performances, I took the stone out, but I still kept my hobble. So I dragged the leg, <laughs> dragged the leg, dragged the leg, and she checked me every time I walked. She said at the end, I was so proud of you. You always dragged your leg. So I knew from the very beginning, with the firm approval of my mother, that I was going to be a great actor. <laughs> I know you do, you, you, you do some on film work and you've been, you've been, yeah, you've been, been doing this actor. for a while. So. I've been doing Helsing for a while and um, other voice work uh, books and stuff. But on camera, I mostly am film and uh, in acting generally, it's, it's only film and stage work that I do. I'm a, uh, by background, very much a stage actor. Was it, was it right out of college, during college? Uh, all through. Um, I have a degree in history from a British university, um, from Durham University, University College. I'm very elitist, actually. <laughs> well, um, and uh, a degree in history uh, from Durham. Did many plays there. Played Romeo. Right. Who would have thought now I'm playing Walter? <laughs> I played Romeo in Romeo and Juliet. And that was a fun time. We toured that around the southwest of England, Cornwall, Devon, Devon and uh, other play Dorset. And the year before, we'd done Measure for Measure. And I played Bottom in measure. That's another ribald character, very unlike Walter. And we toured that around the Republic of Ireland and had a very happy time, uh, you know, in a minivan sleeping on uh, the barn floors of the stately <laughs> homes where we were staying and performing. It was outdoor Shakespeare at the stately homes. And, we, and it was absolutely fantastic. Beautiful mornings, sunny day, slight cloud in the early afternoon, lots of cloud in the late <laughs> afternoon. And as we began our performances, the soft Irish rain would appear almost every night. So we always had to move to our alternate locations, which was in the barn, and we'd lose most of our audience. <laughs> so nine of us, seven audience, various animals, rain coming down, measure for measure, or Romeo and Juliet. Fantastic. <laughs> so now you're just waiting for her to drink blood. Is that right? All in good time, she'll drink. Eventually, she'll drink. Um, well, let's talk about Walter for a second. Give, give me some impressions of Walter. Oh, Walter, what a, what a lovely guy he is. He's a lovely guy. Great. I, I love the fact that he's loyal. I've always liked that about anyone. <laughs> I was like, that's sweet. And then he's got this ungodly ability to kill. And he really gets into it. When he, it's like, uh, must I? <laughs> Yeah, I'm I, must. Kind of my I, I mean, I hate to do this. Nah. <laughs> and then he unloads. And he's really nice, but he's always very deferential. Always like that, too. You know, he knows his place. Yeah. Alucard, all bow down. So he provides the weaponry. He knows his, uh, he knows his onions. <laughs> he knows his onions. He knows what's good for killing those vampires. Yeah. Ever... What's that weapon called? Which the, uh, the the castle or the, the castle the the, Harko, the giant Harkonnen, Harkonnen. That's the Harkonnen that was the one I the cannon fantastic I, I remember doing that voiceover and feeling the glee that Walter was like oh it's almost like a sexual like pleasure 
I, I love on. watching you through the mirror. Because we, <laughs> we have our little glass window that we get to watch, and you get very, yeah, you, you get the hands going. Oh gosh, yeah. So he gets. <laughs> Walter really likes his toys, uh, his killing toys, but he's, he, you know, he's very loyal. I like always like that. He's very polite. Pretty na natty dresser, not bad. Don't like the rim glasses. I modernise those a little. Um, I eat a bit more too. Put a bit of weight on. Yeah, a bit of, bit of weight, I think. A bit of weight on, but it may not be as agile. He's pretty frisky for an older guy. He does all right. He's no, not no. bad. I w I'm looking for how do how do we think Walter is? Oh, we actually. I, I'm trying to remember. I actually have that written down somewhere because we know how old he was during World War II. Because oh, right. we, eventually so, we do a little what, bit of a flashback to that. Oh, yeah. so uh, he'd be, I'll, I'll try and. I'm guessing f young fifties. <laughs> Oh, uh, north, yeah, north sixties. Yeah. Oh my, if he's that frisky in that age, he was like he was he was like he was like twenty two and forty three. So it's around that. Oh goodness, and what age are we in now? I I try not to think about it. Yeah, <laughs> but because I always knew exactly who Walter was, pretty much from um, from the get go, really. I, I remember right some off. of our very first conversations about him actually from from very quickly found out. He just sort of found. Sort it didn't of, take long. To, no, just to out positioned what we were myself doing. into him. And um, I know we did some for the TV series first, and then the first bunch of um, a film or DVD, one of them. The, the, the new DVD, we're called the, the Ultimate DVD. The Ultimate DVD. DVD. And I remember there was some period of time between those two sets of filmings. Quite and, a bit. Um, <laughs> or, or recordings, rather, because I don't know if we actually filmed any of it. Sometimes it's no, very. No, no. I mean, we should do that. We should do that. No, we should have. We should have yeah. done it. Yeah. Anyway. Um, but I remember just listening back to a little bit of him and going, ah, yeah. Ah, yes. Yeah, it didn't take much. That's Walter. I remember that. And then, uh, you know, you're not bad as a director. Well, thank you. It's, it's, not bad. It's nice to hear. So, you know, you, I, I, <laughs> <laughs> and that will be $25, yeah. please. Um, but it was always a great help. Um, you know, we'd be doing our, uh, you know, I'd be looking at it and interpreting it and going, you know, what are we, where are we at this? And looking in sync with the, uh, uh, the actual animation. And I'd do a, certain type of read and you would say let's let's try something else and I would do that uh, and we would change the script just a little so it fitted better or something and I remember thinking that was, that, that whole process was diamond and I, I, I've spoken about this before was about there's a point where you trust the director if, you, if, he's, if he's happy with the recording if, he's, if you've given the line reading that's, that's right that, that feels right for that section that moment oh you have to walk away right there that, that's it and, and, and as an actor as, as the voice talent I've, I've learned to go Okay, if Tarleton says that's okay, it's okay. I need. I, I don't need to do that again. And I should shut the uh, shut the f up, you know, and just <laughs> let's get on to the next thing. Oh God. Uh, yeah, they like you. And is, is Walter a comfortable place for an actor? Is that, oh is yeah, that very. I, I think he's he's one of the the the, the most uh, enjoyable characters in the, in the. I mean, I think they're all enjoyable. I happen to really enjoy playing Walter. I, I think I had a, the Valentine Brothers. I had, I had to have a good time too. <laughs> <laughs> everybody. I mean, I think there's the, all the characters. Yeah, but I'd like to. I mean, I, I don't know if I'm I'm the hero type. I, I don't let Crispin know, but I think it, the aunt's not for me. <laughs> I'm not tall and good looking enough, you know. Um, so anything that's got a potential for good character work. Um, I, which makes it a character that you just find irresistible for some reason. It's like, oh, this guy's really into it. far out, whatever. I'm just like, wow, that guy, oh, jeepers. He's... I mean, it's better when I can be on camera and doing that, but I try and give that same sense to the voice, like, oh my God. Because, you know, you're stuck with the image, the animation, that's that, we got that. But now can we bring in a, a, a character in the voice that is, uh, that is gonna bring the fans into another place. They're gonna go, oh my God, what's, He's rather enjoying that a little bit too much. He, he shouldn't. <laughs> wow. Oh, I love that. <laughs> so that's the, that's the enjoyable challenge for a voice actor, because all we've got to add is our voice. We can't, you know, none of our physicality and face and all of that stuff. It's just, can we capture the, the excitement that we convey in our full body? Can we capture that just in our voice? And it's a, it's uh, it just it comes out, um, I, I guess because I'm in that we've been feeling it now. Yeah, I feel all that. And it just then, bing, out comes the voice. <laughs> well, hopefully not that voice, but yes. And that was my Python voice. <laughs> that, was your Python voice. <laughs> that was obviously not my Walter voice. No, no, I would hope not. Oh, we we act we filter it. It works out okay. So no, you don't. No, I know. I'm just kidding. 
You don't. He had to, don't say that. No, we had. We it's actually. I, I don't know if you recall that we had. We had a discussion many, many years ago about about whether or not to to to, to actually do any play with it. And we, we, with my voice. Yeah, there was with with the, 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 with the very voice. very first with the very first Walter voice. There was talk about it. And they were like, no, because I don't know if you remember what the original I mean, the, what what we were shooting for was was Roddy McDowell. Oh, I, I don't know if you remember those that. conversations. Was was kind of yeah. like this. This this is this is the the, the congenial was... old Englishman. That this is this is this is the Englishman that we were striving for, and, and, yeah. and we went far beyond that by the end of it. Yes, yes, I, I kind of remember that. Wow, I'm glad you did. I, uh, no, no, I'm problem. glad you did because uh, it would have no, it no, been no, awful, no, no. <laughs> awful. But... Hey, I'm Ralph Lister. I play Walter. <laughs> And my name is Talison Jaffe, and I keep all these people in line. Um, and I know you, you've had one convention experience so far. Yeah, that was, that was kind of, quite, fun. quite yeah, surprising how many people wanted my autograph, which is very charming. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I appreciate people liking my work. It's always, it actually is genuine. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm a regular ass, as you know. But it's very nice when the fans actually enjoy your work. and. Uh, respond to it and get excited about it and dress up and you know really get into the 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 world that you're giving them and creating for them and there's no aspect of my acting I don't take really seriously and and or, or hope every everyone gets that um, off camera and off microphone um, life is is to be lived and enjoyed and um, you know being a foolish fool comes naturally to this income <laughs> um, but the the work I've I love and take seriously, and I, um, I think what gave me the most joy about the animation, uh, anime conference convention, was the uh, integrity of the, the the fan base. They were they were really into what we were doing, and there was no BS. These people loved the show. That was just delightful, and and you know it's it's you, you smile at their excesses and screaming and all of that. But you, you go, this is based on their real pleasure of it, and you're giving it to them as a, as a skilled interpretive artist. And how great is that? You know, that's, that's, that's got to be it. I mean, after all, I mean, I, we certainly don't do it for the money, unless you're, you're raking it in as, an, as a film actor, as a movie actor, you know, a la Tom Cruise, et cetera, and then you have ungodly amounts of money. But at this end, it's... There are the rest of us. It's, yeah. it's income, <laughs> but the reward at some levels is the, is the approbation of your, of your audience who actually enjoy what you do and what you give them. And, what, uh, and that, that, that means it's, it's a success, really. Have you, have you ever had any fan interaction outside of just the convention? Yes, I actually have. Um, I've, I, people find me on Facebook. Um, I'm not listed as Ralph Lister. Um, I'm, I'm not sure I should give out my Facebook name, but... Let, some, let them, some, let they can hunt if they so desire. Yeah, surely they can. And that would be f absolutely fine. I've got lots of friends and who send me friend requests for, for join my... Uh, Facebook site, uh, which is fine. Um, or, do, or do I mean my MySpace? My MySpace. I, I, MySpace. I have, I have, I'm on both, and so I get a few fan uh, inquiries that way. And all they really have to say is I'm a fan of Helsing, and I go click yes, accept. Yeah. Um, sometimes I just got them from random people, and I go, uh, excuse me, how do you know me? You know, no problem, but why are you writing to me? <laughs> sort of thing. And they say, well, yeah, I like your work in Helsing. Except, you know, so straight away, as soon as I know they're fans, then of course they're. So I get quite a bit of uh, interaction like that. Some people making nice comments, and I normally write something back. Because I, again, talk to the respect I have for the, for the fan base, for the people who enjoy the, the, the work we do. So, Thomason, uh, is that the end of the clever conversation? I think that's the or, end of, of everything clever I have to say, at the very least. I hope mean, you enjoyed it. I think, I think they, well, they're still watching, so they enjoyed it. Are you still watching? Or they're asleep. I don't know. I'm asleep. I think they might be asleep. Yeah. There's some guy on the sofa there that's asleep. They're going to miss the spoiler. Oh, well, never mind. We were oh. just about to tell you how it was going to end. Never mind. I'm yeah, Alison yeah. Jaffe. I'm Ralph Lister. Good night. Cheers. Mm. <laughs> I, I, am a, I was a goth. I, 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 was, I was a goth, goth once. So. I, I used to dye my hair black. Yeah. No, I, I, I have Black lines. eyeliner. I was wearing back iron about six I days ago. I was listening ago, to so. Front 242, Nitzarab, um, you know, all that dark 
uh, black industrial tape, music. Black Tape for Blue Girls. Cure, of course. Akira, of course. Uh, I think I was... Yeah, you do okay. I was fun. It was <laughs> so, fun. I had black hair. Can you imagine me with black hair? I don't think it would actually look oh, rather man, good. It was so black, I had to actually dye my eyebrows black.